In this video, you're gonna see low country, high country mule deer hunt, and everything else in between. Some of you guys say, why are you guys out there chasing Bambi? There's a whole set of reasons why we're out here. I didn't grow up hunting. I actually grew up mixed between country and city life. I enjoy both. Joined the military when I was about 17 years old. Went to my first duty station. One of my squad leaders said, if you really want to be a good soldier and you want to learn everything about the military and how to find the enemy and all that, he said, get into hunting. You're going to learn maps. You're going to learn everything that it takes to be a good soldier. You're going to learn how to hike and all that stuff. So first time I went out, they gave me this bow. They're all up in their tree stands. And I'm sitting there at the bottom. At the time, I was stationed at Fort Stewart in Georgia. You can shoot does. So I'm sitting there, sitting there for an hour, just looking around. And then a, a doe comes crashing through. They make so much noise. I get up, I grab that bow, and I just... And I hit like three feet short of that deer, and that deer practically did a backflip. I was hooked ever since. Bought a Matthews bow in like 2002, like $1,400. Started bow hunting, killing deer all over the East Coast, uh, to Tennessee, Oklahoma, Washington, everywhere. I'm always chasing deer. Now we're in Nevada. I passed on to the, the next generation. You know, you pass it on. You had me sitting in a tree stand at, what, 10 years old, probably? Adrian would be sitting on my lap with his bow, 40 pounds of pull. And we'd see a deer and whoosh. Tree stand hunting is a million times different from this west coast stuff this west coast stuff is no joke like i said i left to the military and learned it on the east coast came back here and now i'm trying to learn it and it's difficult in georgia i'm going for lunch i'm going after work coming home going to bed and, and everything and out here we've been out here for over a week two hours away if i want to go eat a cheeseburger and get gas so stay tuned see the highs the lows and everything in between we appreciate you guys tuning in and uh Let's get this video rolling. It's not that hot up here. No, the weather's nice. Have you, you ever been out somewhere this remote? Yeah, I think I've been out here before on some of the hunts. It's pretty cool out here. That's right, he was on the elk hunt. We're probably an hour and a half from civilization. At least. We're out here in the middle of nowhere. This area's a little thick. We're just driving through so that we get out of the truck and stretch because we've been riding for a while on these dirt roads. So due to this year's rain, there's a lot of rattlesnakes out and we just saw one. He went in the water, huh? You see him? Yeah, he got him. Yeah, he don't want to go in the water. But yeah, there's Got rattlesnakes him. everywhere this year. It's cool, but it's not cool at the same time. It's cool to see him. We should have done a catch and cook, huh? And that's the first wild one I've seen. I don't really see him often out here. It's weird, I couldn't get him to rattle. That's not, I don't like when they do that, but it's cool he ran. Yeah, he, he took ran off. away. Well, that happened fast, didn't it? We just got a warning for low pressure. Just a few minutes later, this happened. Um, we'll have to go into town, see if they can repair this tire. If not, we gotta go buy new tires. We need a double jacket. Yeah. Well, we fixed that flat tire. We got on a spare. So hopefully it holds, all the shops are closed anyway. So we're still gonna glass in the morning. Since we were already literally way out here to our glassing spot, we figured we might as well. This is the sleeping scenario right now. We got the truck, got a lantern up there for now. We got a few bags, sleeping bags. Oop. Kicking our little table. We just ate food. What do you think? It wasn't the best opener we've ever seen. We went up to a spot that we had scouted on Google Maps and the road was just ridiculous. You probably barely make it up in a quad that's how bad the road was so if we don't see something in the morning we're just going to um head back into town about an hour and a half get four new tires because once one blows they're probably all going bad get four new tires come back out and then just continue continue the mission all, all right. right good night there's bugs all over the place around here i don't know what kind of bug that is well, it looks like he bites <laughs> Did you learn how to switch a tire today, Drew? Yep. There we go. Yep. Well, we're in the hard way. <laughs> yeah, we're ready. We're packing up our stuff. I just got to throw my bow on. And then it's time for about a mile hike in the glass. And then if we see a buck we got to shoot, we're looking at another mile in to get him. So it's going to be fun, though. 
A lot of hard work, that's what it takes to find deer sometimes. We're ready to do the hike. First hike of the hunt, really. We've been glassing like crazy. I'm ready to start moving. <laughs> We've just been glassing around, scouting around and stuff, so just good to get the gear ready, test it out, test our flow, and get back in there, and you never know. There's some big bucks in here, so might happen tonight. Let's check it out. We were glassing right now for about 30 minutes. We've seen a couple does, but uh, it hasn't been raining on us the whole time. And now all of a sudden, we got a big rainstorm it looks like coming our way. So we're debating if we need to pack up and get out of here before it hits or not. But as of right now, all we've seen in this spot are a couple little forky horns and a bunch of does still. Probably 20 or 30 does, 10 spikes and nothing worth shooting. It has to be huge if we're gonna push ourselves to the limit like that. But uh, yeah, this storm's gonna come in, pour down rain. It's all gonna go down this valley and it might wash the truck away, so we're gonna get out of here. <laughs> Adrian got eyes on a buck. He's making a play. We got eyes on. just made that stock what happened yeah so i had to stare off with him at 53 yards there was a tree between us but i probably could have waited him out and shot him but he was a lot smaller when we got up to him he had a uh, antler shrinkage <laughs> get a little excited when you see a buck in here you get up close and personal and he just wasn't super big and now we're not trophy hunters in the sense that we're only out here to kill a trophy but a lot of times I like to shoot stuff that's the best representative of its species and on top of that to shoot something back here it better be worth the while because a smaller buck there's lots of them down in the flats but that was still fun though that's cool cool to test out the gear everything and so you waited five years I mean yeah and I waited five years for this tag so you want to make you know you want to make it worth it you don't want to shoot the first buck you get in range of you want to make sure he's a good one you know so that's what we're doing now we're back to the truck we were headed down because it was going to rain on us and then we got sidetracked by that deer. But now before the major rain hits, we got to get out of here. All right, guys, we don't show every day because it gets kind of boring. We've been living out of this truck. We finally see a buck that's shootable. Really big buck. We got a bunch of bucks down here and we're just watching them. And it uh, looks like a couple good bucks, so we're excited. We saw a big 4x5 earlier. And uh, there's a big 4x4 over there where he was at in the same area. Yeah, I'm just going to get in the mix. I don't know if the bigger buck was with him, but, you know, we've already been out here a while. You don't want to be overly picky to the point to where you won't shoot anything. So he's a pretty nice buck, respectable, and uh, in a good spot. So things are looking like it could work out right now. I'm going to go ahead and full send it, and uh, I'm going to bring you guys along. Let's do it. 500-yard stock, I think. Yep. Uh, maybe 600. See if good luck. Thank you. Watch for snakes. Yeah. It's going way over there. There we go. Time to stop. They're way over there. What's the deal? Looked like you were gonna step on him. Yeah, it was. Uh, I got 54 yards, but the wind switched and he smelled me. Why didn't you draw? Because there's a branch in front of the vitals. <laughs> I ain't shooting a deer in the butt. <laughs> I'm 
We're saying goodbye to this camp. We've been here a little while now looking for deer and we've been on deer every single day but for some reason the deer in this area they do not have any sort of pattern. Our problem is we're finding the bucks and every day they're moving different, they're going in different areas and we spent a good amount of time, a little bit too much time you could say, chasing deer that didn't have a pattern. They're sleeping in the trees, they weren't hitting water because it keeps storming and uh, we got close a couple times but uh, we're getting tired of chasing deer that are patternless. So we're going to go ahead and switch up and we're going to go up high again somewhere where deer got a, a good pattern to them. But these deer down here, we chased some deer today that we haven't seen at all yet. And um, they're just no pattern. They're not bedding in the open. They're not bedding where you could see them at all. As you can see right behind me is all just thick trees. And they're getting into this stuff. And when they get in there, good luck finding them. Because these deer, man, they're driving us crazy. Every day we're seeing them. And they're in a different spot every day moving a different way and they I don't know if they don't feel safe in the flats out here but they run a lot and they're moving moving and if you guys know anything about archery you can't have deer that aren't patternable and uh, move a whole lot because you got to be able to get close real close and they're just not you know these deer just ain't it it's starting to get down to crunch time so since it's crunch time it's hitting the time to start going to the places you didn't want to go that you know the big bucks are at but might have not wanted to go there quite yet because there's big bucks all over we've chased them low we've chased them high and now it's time to go really high where we know that there's big bucks but like i said that's a pain to get up there it's going to be a couple thousand foot elevation we got lucky because we got the truck a decent way up so now it's not so bad that's going to be a decent more than a decent a pretty good hike to get up there which we're fairly used to we've done that plenty of times in the past but obviously if you're a west coast hunter you know that if you don't have to do it then you don't want to do it but looks like we'll have to do it now yeah unfortunately we have to do it which we knew we were probably going to do it we knew you know, I think we, 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 knew. we knew and we come out ready for this kind of expecting but we're talking miles and sweat our butts off and hopefully when we get up there we can slam them and you know everything works out and if there's any mountain lions hopefully they run and don't attack us because there's a lot on this mountain and what do you got ready for that sig p320 that's uh ready for anything ready for crazy lions ready for bears crazy people and it's not <laughs> <laughs> same with this one 10 mil all right let's get out of here let's do it it's gonna be fun we're gonna go ahead and do a full send we've been hunting out here pretty hard and we're gonna live up on the very top of this big old mountain for a couple days at least and there's some big 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 deer up there but they're in big big country and obviously all we got is it's a little bow so we're rationing our foods rationing our water all the must-haves tuna chips fruit packs trail mix it's gonna be fun going up there three days left we see deer at the peak of the peak of the peak so we're just gonna go up there and sleep where they sleep and if they come to say hi put an arrow through them <laughs> that's it we'll see if it's worth it back to live out there for up to three four days i guess looks good it's all professional <laughs> professional all right guys it's show time we're ready got everything we need everything's packed up quick prayer most importantly and we're off up to the unknown up to the tops of mountains to live with the deer for a couple of days we'll see you on the top deer of the mountain and the crazy screaming elk oh yeah last thing elk bugling all over this mountainside so sounds great music to our ears nature's beautiful looking like a profession now <laughs> Well, we're nice and heavy going in. Hopefully, we're ridiculously heavy going out. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. See you at the top of the mountain. Almost there. Small life. Oh, yeah. Home sweet home. We're going to sleep here? Yeah, we're going to sleep right in here. Kick it out. We'll get be sheltered from the wind. And anything else so it's perfect nice and flat we're up here in paradise now it's time to start doing some glassing we got amazing views all around 
Can't beat it. Spotting scope. Let's get to a spot where we can glass and see what we can see. It's beautiful. Welcome to Narnia. So a lot of people don't really come up to areas like this because it's pretty difficult to get here. And it took us a while to hike in. And now if we see a deer, obviously we've got a long hike ahead of us anyways too. So this place doesn't get touched by man too often. So there should be a lot of big deer hopefully. All right. On the camera it still looks like daylight, but it's dark already. First afternoon sitting here. We sat here one morning and afternoon before and I'd seen a lot of bucks. So you come back first afternoon and we got some books right where we know that they like to travel through and i believe that i spotted a a bachelor group and a pretty big buck solo at the very top but i don't know if you can tell that's way up there so we'll see yeah miles up there still and we're far in so we'll see if we, we're gonna make that happen i don't know our best bet are these closer bucks we know exactly where they're going back and forth every morning and night it's a big group though there's probably what 10 bucks in there you think yeah yeah so We'll see, but it's good. We're already seeing deer. This is camp. We got horses coming to see what's going on. Welcome to my mansion. What's up? What's up? Show MTB Cribs. Let me open up the door. Welcome to my house. <laughs> so as you can see, we've got two king size mattresses. Just a sleeping bag. We've got our stove right here. <laughs> no fire this time though, but we just got uh, these mosquito nets, little things, and our sleeping bag in there. So. We got both of those, we got our food and stuff. It's getting windy, so this spot kind of shades us good. We're gonna set up our frames to block it a little bit, and this is home. So we're real light. If we need to move, we'll move. But as far as tonight goes, and maybe the next day, we don't know, this is home. What a perfect place for camp. We got bugs and a black widow down there. I don't think the black widow will mess with us, so. Should we try to get him or no? Nah, he's just minding his own business. Kidding me? If I put him right there? As long as he don't end up in our boots. Well, that was pretty good. Well, we slept pretty good in here. Had the strap, had a couple things. Sun's coming up. Time to work. Yep. Right. Slept like a champ. Yeah. It's beautiful out here. Camp was a success. Showtime. We're out chasing these deer. And it seems like every hundred yards there's deer that get spooked. Alright. Let's go. This rock right here is very significant. When you look at it down there from the road. It is way up here. Show the truck down there. So Adrian walked me down here. He was way up on top. You can't even see it because of the sun. He was way up on top of that hill up there. And uh, I mean, it has to be a hundred feet high and he was shooting at 90 yards downward. So it was a very difficult shot. Wish we could have come down, but it, it's a very steep hill. If he would have hit that deer, it probably would have rolled down and there's a drop off of about 300 feet. See that cliff? looks like that right below us so i don't know very difficult and um, i believe this hunt's over 
we couldn't make it happen. Unfortunately, we tried our very hardest to do so, and sometimes uh, that's just how it works. You know, you can't always succeed. That's why, you know, you talk to any old timer, and that's why all of them always joke. No, it's not, it's not killing, it's hunting. So I came out here to hunt, and we got a good hunt out of it. It's not catching, it's fishing. Yeah, it's not <laughs> catching, it's fishing. So you go out for the hunting, for the fishing, not only the end. That end goal, if I would have shot that buck, it would have been the cherry on top. But we came out here and got the experience we were looking for. So I appreciate everyone for watching. Once again, if you're interested in anything we're wearing, uh, links are all down in the description below. Shout out One Rate Gear, awesome company if you guys want some camo for this hunting season. Vortex Optics, I've been running some Vortex this whole hunt, great glass. Zolio for safety, out here in these high mountains, no service. This is just how you ensure you'll get back home safe. None of these companies pay us. These are all just stuff we use. So shout out to everybody. Matthew's bows, great bow, shoots amazing. I can hit 90 every single time, but uh, this time, you know, a little bit of adrenaline and about a 45 degree angle just didn't work out. And then most importantly, shout out to our fans, shout out to everybody who has watched this video and shout out to everybody who's been here through the whole journey, through the ups and downs and through it all. So we got a lot more coming. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you outdoors. You're like, whoa, watch where you're swinging that. <laughs> so when I'm in the mountains, I often think of this quote by Henry Thoreau. A man will go his whole life fishing without realizing it's not the fish he's fishing for. Now, a lot of people might think that's funny because this is a hunting video, but it has a deep message at the end of the day. You know, when you're out here in these mountains, you've got to realize that it's not the buck that I'm chasing. A lot of times that I would go hunting when I was younger and throughout my life, the buck, the end goal, the end result was always what I was chasing. And I never would sit down and like look and just absorb the beauty in the moment of, of what we're doing. I'm out here with my dad, I'll come out here with friends, with family and whoever, or even just out here by myself. You know, everybody gets caught up in the rat race out in the cities and stuff. You gotta experience at least once in your, once in your lifetime what the world is really like out here. Cause once you're out here and you get grounded with this earth, you know, the rest of politics doesn't matter. Nothing else matters in this world but kind of the experience you're having right here. You'll talk to old men, and they always say the same thing. They'll tell you, man, you know what? The best moments in my life are when I hunted with my dad, with my grandpa, with my kids. And they'll, they'll never tell you the best hunt of my life was the one where I killed the biggest buck. They'll always tell you that the best hunts of my life were the ones where I went out with friends and loved ones. Maybe we didn't kill, maybe we killed but we went out and had a good time and gave it our all.